Just like every nation with democratic in his name, <clears throat> North Korea. The Great Ching's name is a uh, complete clickbait because this nation is the opposite of great. In fact, it is the worst nation on the planet right now. And yes, literally worse than the Ottoman Empire. But obviously, since this is the Great War Redux, I broke it. Let's go. So, the reason this country is terrible uh, becomes immediately apparent because first of all, our industry sucks. Second of all, our army is uh, pretty big, but nobody has guns. Like, this is just a trend in every single Great War Redux video by now. <laughs> and uh, also, yeah, national spirits, uh, low legitimacy, purchase restriction. Oh my god, look at all of this. 75% consumer goods factor. Oh my god, we don't have any factories. I think we have like one, fa <laughs> we have one factory for construction. <laughs> okay, yeah, immediately building military factories because, uh... Yeah, we have six mills. That's that's kind of terrible. And uh, the reason why this is terrible is because we have a revolution on the horizon as well. Uh, if this wasn't bad enough already, we're going to have to suppress a revolt. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to suppress any revolts with this trashy army. But don't worry, I do have a plan. Let's also not forget to put on the equipment design and give us like a tiny bit more efficiency cap. Research, we're going to put one into machine tools. And the other one, I would normally do construction. But uh, we have one sieve, so construction's not going to do anything. So instead, this research slot I'm going to use to get a few more buffs on our equipment, like soft attack over here is gonna be very useful. Let's just get five soft attack on infantry. Focuses, we're gonna go immediately down here, grab these mills because uh, we need a lot of equipment to suppress that revolution. I'm gonna send my army over to the capital where I'm gonna organize it and five speed, go. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, because of our one trillion problems, we don't get any PP gain, like at all. So um, yeah, no PP for us. <laughs> I literally can't do anything. Okay, so right now we have 35 divisions but uh, they are literally 35% equipped, which basically means they are utterly useless. So what I'm going to do instead is switch all of them to the good infantry template. And then we're going to click the consolidate button over here, which basically turns these 35 divisions into 9 divisions. But at least these now have equipment, so they are no longer useless. I'm going to try and train a couple more divisions, but... You know, we don't have equipment, so, uh, hopefully we can get these divisions out before the revolution, which I think is, like, in a year and a bit. Yeah, we're, we're missing 3,000 guns, which isn't a lot, but our production sucks. Bro, this entire massive country can only produce one single piece of artillery per week. Like, <laughs> Oh my god, our production is honestly so bad. Normally researching with these design companies costs political power, but um, the, the I, I have no political power, so it's basically free. <laughs> okay, that's like a weird bonus, I guess. I just looked at my laws and we are stuck on free trade, which means goodbye to all our resources. And we also have this terrible economy law. Oh my goodness, and I don't have any PP to change out of them. I'm starting to see why the Qing Dynasty collapsed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we got those military factories. Let's go over here, grab some sieves, and fix the payment of indemnities national spirit along the way as well. So we've gone from making one artillery per week to one artillery per day, which still sucks, but it's way the hell better than what we started with. Now we're gonna come out of our deficit in like a reasonable amount of time. Oh, there we go. Second Guangzhou uprising. This basically means we have another 140 days until the Xinhai revolution happens. So um, uh, yeah, this is a ticking time bomb now. We gotta get ready before that. Okay, it's now less than a month to the uprising. So I'm gonna start organizing my front lines. Basically, the rebels spawn in this tile, this tile, and this tile. If we don't take them out within, like, a month, the entire country just explodes. So, um, yeah, that's our deadline, basically. Okay, the revolution is two days away. I've given this army this field marshal here, mainly because he has the engineer trait, which gives 5% attack on rivers, and yeah, there's, like, a crap ton of rivers over here. We're gonna be attacking across rivers a lot, and hopefully we can crush them before our country implodes. There we go, 3rd of October. Obviously, we're gonna choose to play as the Qing Dynasty, and, uh, we're just gonna immediately push in. And because early I consolidated in my divisions. These divisions are now fully equipped, so they do actually have some decent soft attack, and these revolutionary divisions aren't the greatest, so hopefully we can break them. Okay, they are now down to one tile. I'm gonna do the one division army force attack trick, and that's gonna give force attack to all of our divisions. All we can do now is literally just pray, and uh, Tibet's declared their independence. Uh, bro, okay, sure. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about that. And just like that, Wu Chang has taken the end of the Xinhai Revolution. The glorious Chinese Revolution has uh, lasted like less than a month. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the devs have actually nerfed this revolution for the Qing multiple times, but um, that's not gonna stop me. Uh, we just broke the revolution. It's it's done. Like everything. <laughs>
Our trouble is not over though, because uh, Mongolia is going to declare independence any moment now. So what I'm going to do is go over here, make a new division, and we're going to do one battalion horses, go convert all of our divisions over to the horse division, and uh, line them up on the Mongolian border. Okay, let's go for a horse ride around Mongolia then. Whilst the Mongolian army is over here doing god knows what, hopefully we can just walk around the army, and yeah, we've taken their capital. Nice. The greatest enemy of this entire campaign is literally Tanutuva. <laughs> We've now taken all Mongolian victory points, and they've still not surrendered, so, um, I guess we just gotta walk around Mongolia now. This is, this is very fun, this is very interesting gameplay here. Hey, let's go, Mongolia finally surrenders, there we go. Mongolia retaken, look at the awesome Chinese Tuvan war, uh, zero casualties on both sides, uh, Tanotuva has no divisions and no factories, um, awesome epic war here. <laughs> Tanotuva capitulates. There we go, Tanatuva and Mongolia both reclaimed. I can't reclaim Tibet at the moment because first of all I can't justify war goals yet, and second of all they got a British guarantee. Screw you UK. But we will retake them in the future, right then. Uh, guess we just gotta prepare for the Great War now because remember, we're still in the Great War Redux. We may have stopped our own country from imploding, but Europe is still gonna implode, so uh, we gotta prepare for that. And it's already March 1912 and I've basically got nothing done, oh no. Okay, Southern Factories is done, that's the industry branch completed, and the payment of indemnities is gone. However, after our revolution, we have received even more terrible national spirits. First of all, recovery after revolution. This thing sucks, like, a lot. <laughs> we also now have army corruption. I don't know why. I crushed the revolutionaries in, like, 20 days, but my army still got worse. Um... Great War Redux logic. And also, I now have hyperinflation. I don't know why. <laughs> the revolution lasted like two seconds. I don't know why I suddenly have hyperinflation, but I guess gotta deal with that. And the only way to do that is uh, over in the political branch, so let's go down there. Uh, I just tried to start a production line for trains, and apparently my military factories have stopped working. Like, I'm not even kidding. My military factories have literally stopped functioning. I don't know why. I think it might be the uh, recovery after revolution national spirit, and is screwing something up, but yeah, not only is our country bad, it's literally broken. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> okay, I guess I just have to wait then. Oh my god, this freaking mod, honestly. <laughs> well, since our military factories literally don't work, uh, I guess we build some civs. Um, yeah, there's literally no point building mills right now. They literally don't work. Hey, let's go. Dockyards actually work. We can make a few convoys. Dockyards actually work. <laughs> okay, let's send our navy out to exercise. 2,000 years later. Okay, recovery after the revolution, national spirit is gone. Um, does that mean my mills work? My mills work! Well, okay, let's get producing. We really need to get producing. We literally lost two years of production. I was just looking at the artillery tab, and improved artillery has 15.3 soft attack and 10 defense, and howitzers have 15 soft attack and 3 defense. They nerfed howitzers too? Oh my god. Okay, apparently howitzers are trash now. This is no longer howitzer redux, it's artillery Redux. We gotta research artillery now. <laughs> they literally just made Howards as useless. Like, artillery is better in every way now. Oh. I honestly don't understand the logic behind this balancing. What you could do is make Howards have like a massive org penalty. That would be a lot better balancing it, but nope. They just took away all the soft attacks. So now there's no point in Howards at all. Uh, let's have a moment of silence for Howards or Redux. It will forever be dead now. Oh, Franz Ferdinand assassination, that means World War One's gonna happen. Um, yeah, let's just say that we are in no way ready to prepare. We have no factories, our entire army consists of one battalion horses. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to do a bit more preparation, to be honest. I probably joined in, like, 1916, so I'm just gonna pray that Germany does not fall over in the meantime. Like, I swear to God, Germany, please, please do not fall over. I need to join the Central Powers, okay? I need a lot of land from the Entente, so I'm begging you, Germany, please be competent. <laughs> Please be competent. Okay, fate of the Beiyang army. This basically deals with this terrible army national spirit we have here. So we can either depoliticize them, which basically gets rid of it, but we lose a literal ass ton of stability and war support. Or we can remove this national spirit over here, but gain an equally terrible one, which expires in two years. Um, I really don't fancy losing 30 stability, so uh, we're gonna go with the top option. And that basically means our army is useless until late 1916. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm honestly gonna cry. Why is this country so bad?
Okay, I've put together this attacking division here. Since Howard's has got nerfed to the ground, we've got artillery here instead of Howard's. And oh my god, that soft attack is miserable. Why the why did they nerf Howard's so much? Okay, 116 soft attack. It's not horrendous, but hopefully we can use this to break the Entente. And yeah, I'm just gonna train a few of these. It is now October 1916, and our purge national spirit is finally gone after two years. But more importantly, something else has happened in Europe. Basically, Germany's ruling party has switched, and their leader is now Mr. Ludendorff. As a result, they've gained this national spirit here, Kaiser Wilhelm, which gives them 20% more chance to accept authoritarian diplomacy. Obviously, we are authoritarian because we are a monarchy, and that means Germany will finally, finally accept our request for military access. Jesus Christ, that literally took forever. And with the military access, I'm going to send this entire army over here as an expeditionary force to Germany, and we're going to use this to kick down France's door. Let's send them all the way over here to Wilhelmshaven. They're probably going to take like half a year to get there. In the meantime, I've trained a bunch of defensive divisions, I'm not crazy enough to try and hold the no supply area called Mongolia So I'm just gonna hold like this area down here There's also no supply here in northern Korea and here in Manchuria So Japan can push into our territory all they want. I literally don't care I've also got troops holding this British enclave over here Hong Kong and Macau over here because Portugal is in the Entente And also I've got a very loose defensive line holding the Raj and the French border here And that also reminds me I'm also gonna send my navy to Wilhelmshaven because yes We're gonna be doing a naval invasion and just in case the high seas fleet doesn't give us naval supremacy hopefully my 24 crappy ships are gonna push us over the edge and if you're wondering how i'm gonna enter the great war i'm gonna go over here justify on tibet for a claim state and that's gonna last 85 days now the reason i'm justifying on tibet is because when the war ends the victoria sides gets to annex all of their claims and cause and as you can see we still have a claim on tibet so if i declare war on tibet i get to annex them which is nice uh uk nothing to see here just a quarter of a million chinese troops passing through the suez canal uh don't ask me why i'm here. Um, <laughs> justification on Tibet is done. Let's go and declare war on them. Obviously, that's going to bring in the British. They're going to join the Entente, then we join the Central Powers, and then we're going to use our expeditionary force over here to hopefully kick down France's door. Now, since the last Great War Redux video, the devs have obviously tried to stop me and uh, nerf the naval invasion capacity again, <laughs> which means that we can only use eight divisions now instead of the previous, like, 15. Now, in the previous videos, I noticed that they do guard Cherbourg, so I'm not going to attack near Normandy this time. Instead, I'm going to try and go for this port near Le Havre and Amiens. The reason is because there is no victory point on the port, so I think the AI might not guard it. I'm praying anyway. As soon as these troops land, I'm just gonna make a quick dash for Paris, and uh, hopefully the French AI does not have time to respond. And obviously, as soon as we take Paris, the AI will literally just surrender. <laughs> I know it's literally the fourth video I've done the strategy, but hey, it's broken. The strategy works, and I'm gonna use it. Tibet is now in the Entente, but uh, Germany still won't let me into the Central Powers. I don't know why Germany hates me. Like, why do you hate me, Ludendorff? What have I ever done to you? Come on, let me join! Let me in! Let me in! Let me in! And by the way, this Chinese Eastern Railway thing, uh, they are a Russian puppet, but I don't think the Russians can call them into the war, so I don't need to guard this border, which is nice. Hey, let's go! The Germans finally let us join the Central Powers. Nice. Alright, naval invasion's prepared. We managed to get naval supremacy just barely with our crappy boats, so, uh, naval invasion of France, off you go. <laughs> Alright, I put the speed down, we've landed. Let's just walk to Paris. Um, let's pray that there's no garrison on Paris, because these are not the best divisions, so if there's a garrison on on Paris, I'm kinda screwed. There's literally just like some Chinese guys walking to Paris right now. <laughs> go, go. There's no divisions in Paris. Okay, go, 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 go. Come on, come on, come on. Paris falls. <laughs> we just took Paris as the Qing Dynasty. What the hell is this? Okay, we've taken Orléans as well. Uh, I don't know why the French is not surrendering. Um, what if I give Paris to Germany? Maybe that's gonna make France surrender. Okay, there we go. Giving Paris to Germany actually worked. The Entente surrenders. Let's go. We won World War One. It's the great chain. <laughs> Okay, just before the armistice happens, I'm gonna go over here and declare war on the Chinese Eastern Railway because I do want to annex them at the end of the war. Obviously, the Victoria sides gets all their claims and cause, and we have cause on all of this. And also, I'm gonna use the same strategy I used in literally every other Great War Redux video, and that is to keep justifying war goals after the armistice ends by making world tension go super high. So what I'm gonna do is go over here and declare war on all of these British vassals, which we can do for free since, you know, we're at war with the UK. And just in case world tension was still not high enough, I'm gonna justify on the US as well. Armistice and peace. It's honestly so cursed for the Qing Dynasty to have this national spirit right now. Victors of the Great War. <laughs>
And there we go. We got all of our cores and our claims back. Tibet annexed. We got Taiwan back from Japan as well. We got Hong Kong and Macau. We got the Liaodong Peninsula and Dalian. We also managed to annex the Russian Railway. Oh my god, that is one juicy piece deal. <laughs> okay, we're not done yet though. Uh, yeah, Japan. Japan, you better be careful, okay? I am not done with you. Oh yeah, with all our newly researched naval tech, these cruisers are gonna be godly. All of Japan's ships are like 1910 ships. We are gonna shred through them. We're about to avenge the first sign of Japanese war. Okay, let's just produce like a butt ton of these. Well, I've justified on the Dutch East Indies. They're always free real estate because the Netherlands themselves don't actually get a guarantee. And as soon as we get this war goal, I might as well just kick down the Netherlands. I did manage to join back into Germany's faction. So uh, hopefully we get some war score. We can take out the Netherlands, steal some of their ships and their dockyards to help us in our war with Japan. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just screwing around at this point. <laughs> okay, absolutely disgusting peace deal. We partitioned the Netherlands with the Germans. So now there's just like a bit of the Qing dynasty in Europe. I know. It's cursed. We also annexed the Dutch East Indies except for uh, Java here, which I couldn't afford to take So they're just independent now. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm bored So I'm just gonna declare war on France We also need a lot of steel for our Navy and France conveniently has quite a lot So might as well go and get those resources as well. Oh my goodness. What a cursed peace deal We have a Vichy France down here who is an imperial protector of the Qing dynasty And then we have the kingdom of France under Victoria who is a German puppet and then what is going on here with Austria Hungary? Okay, well, let's send our army over there. Austria-Hungary, you're next. I honestly don't know what's wrong with the Austro-Hungarian AI. Like, the front line is just open. Um, the entire army is in Bulgaria. I don't know why. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Austria-Hungary? Okay, well, I don't mind. Uh... Right click, go. I have no idea what just happened. It looks like a scripted peace deal. I think this is like the Brudekrieg uh, peace deal again, but this time Germany won. So uh, we now have a kingdom of Romania down here, led by this guy, and they're a Bulgarian puppet. And then Bulgaria annexed a bit of land. And then there, there's another kingdom of Romania, and they're a Qing dynasty puppet. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, well, let's go invade Ukraine then. When I ask you who does Eastern Ukraine belong to, um, uh, the Qing Dynasty, obviously. <laughs> I think we've messed up Europe enough, so, uh, let's go back here and do what we are originally gonna do, and that's take down Japan. I would like to sincerely apologize for these borders, because, um, there's two kingdoms of Romania. They're not connected. They're separated by another kingdom of Romania. There's a kingdom of Ukraine, a kingdom of Poland who's in Ukraine, another Ukraine, <laughs> and, like, two Belaruses, and then, I, I don't even... <laughs> I'm honestly so sorry for these borders. Mandate of Heaven focus completed. And that's actually unlocked decisions, which let us revoke concessions from the Great Qing, which basically means that we can go over here and, like, beg Germany to get the hell out of Qingdao. Please say yes, Germany. Please say yes. And there we go. We got it back. Let's go. Oh, no. Bulgaria is going to war, which means uh, Russia is in, and that means... Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, well, I guess World War II is happening in 1922. <laughs> there we go. War justification on Japan is done. I also did a few uh, false justifications over here just to bait out a few guarantees because I really don't want to fight any other country. So yeah, Japan didn't get a guarantee because these other countries all wasted their PP guaranteeing whatever the hell these are. <laughs> okay, we don't have to fight anyone else. What I'm going to do is split this fleet into two uh, task forces and then we're just going to convoy raid here. We should be able to shred through the Japanese Navy because our ships are like the most modern design and the Japanese fleet are just like outdated pieces of crap. So we should be able to get through it. Yep, we're definitely shredding through these Japanese screens. Oh my god. Goodness. <laughs> oh my god, look at the Japanese fleet just go down. 40 Japanese destroyers gone already. We've only lost two ships. Japanese Navy is getting decimated. We're getting battleships as well now. The Japanese Navy is honestly just no match. Look at the insane amount of ships we're getting. Yep, this is what I call revenge for the first Sino-Japanese war. We got the Japanese pride of the fleet. Yeah, these dreadnoughts are no match for my light cruisers. Yeah, light cruiser spam is definitely the play. Within the first month of the war, the Japanese Navy is down to 30 ships. This is honestly the reverse of the first Sino-Japanese war. Uh, yeah, I think we've already won. Let's just declare victory. Okay, right. I'm going to naval invade Korea. Get rid of all of these troops. And then we go off to the mainland. All of these Japanese troops in Korea are dead. Um, I honestly overprepared for this war. I mean, is this even a war at this point? We're just like walking across Japan. There is no resistance whatsoever. And there we go. Japan is once again a subject of the Qing. Century of humiliation avenged for like the 10th time. Now, at this point, I could join the Germans and go to war with the Russians and reclaim out of Manchuria, but it's 1923. I've honestly had enough. This is now the fourth time I've completely broken this mod, and I think it is time that I declare ultimate victory.